This channel is part of the History Hit Network. Stick around to find out more. This is the tiny village of Wadden in Dorset. It's a beautiful place to live in, protected from the elements by this high ridge up here and on a clear day overlooking what must be one of the most spectacular views in the whole country. But how long have people been living here? The owners of these two bungalows have found lots of pottery in their back garden and they've discovered lots of lumps and bumps in the fields around them. This is the two bungalows here. Naturally, they're wondering what it's all about and who was living here hundreds, if not thousands, of years ago. Time Team have got just three days to come up with some answers. We've got a very interesting situation here because David here Hi. Hi, live, lives in this bungalow here and yeah. he's the one that wrote to us, wrote to Time Team. And he shares this garden with Grace who lives in this bungalow here. And in front of it there's this septic tank which is this mound. And when this was being dug you watched it and the workmen were pulling pottery That's out right. all the time, weren't yes. they? They dug away right the either side and Lots of earth came out, basically. We found a lot of pottery in it. Basically, the spoil heap was pushed over there, and all the pottery really came out of the mound there, covered with nettles. So, just up on Absolutely, this bit yeah. here? Oh, yeah, I can see the manhole cover. That's yeah. right, yes. And then there's a yes. pipe running down here. The other stuff came out That's of it. That's right. In, in this the direction? Trench. Down in this sort of direction. Yeah. So we've got this big collection of pottery, the problem we have, Tony, is we don't know whether all this pottery has come in with soil that's been dumped on the site here, in which case it belongs somewhere else and doesn't tell us very much, or whether it actually relates to buildings and structures or workshops or anything like that, actually in the ground here. So we're going to have to, well, first of all, do some geophysics and, and, and see if there's any structures. But uh, we're actually going to put a trench in here and, and see what we get. Mm -hmm. Where's the pottery that David found? It's up in the bungalow. Come and have a look, because it's a fantastic collection. Can you show me the pipe? Yes, sure, yes. The recording. Fine. No problem. David's yeah. neighbour, Grace, is waiting for a hip operation. Nice. So we're planning yeah, to bring the archaeology to her whenever we can. Oh, Grace, I brought Tony to see the pottery. <laughs> well, all this came from your back garden? Yes. And this is just a tiny proportion of it as well. Dave just saved a sample. Mass masses more has been thrown out. It's strange. It's not all from one period, but it doesn't run completely through steady either. There's masses of this medieval stuff, 12, 13, 1400 AD, and there's a sort of gap of about 600 years. Then there's a bit of late Roman stuff to 300 AD. And then there's another 700-year gap. Then we've got masses of this early Iron Age stuff, which is in fantastic condition. Huge bits of it here, really fresh breaks. They haven't gone very far, have they, Lisa? They haven't. It's unusual to get early Iron Age shards in this sort of condition unless they're found in a large feature like a pit or unless they've been fairly swiftly covered up after the settlement was abandoned. So does that mean you think it's more likely that the people who were using this stuff came from around here rather than it comes from elsewhere and was just dumped in for building deposit? I think it's very likely that, that you're actually on or near a, an early Iron Age settlement here because if you look at the condition of these shards, they're unabraded, the surface is good, the size is large, and there's fresh fracture. We tend to rely on this a lot, you know, freshly broken stuff on the site where they live in, abraded stuff like this, kicking about in the plough soil for generations, probably. Now, this you said is early Iron Age. Now, what do you mean by early Iron Age? Um, I would put this group um, between 700 and 500 BC. So we've got a bit of a mystery already. We've got loads of this medieval stuff, loads of stuff around 500 BC, and only little islands in between. So. I don't know what was happening in your garden, Grace. I hope we can find out. What do you hope that we might find? Um, 
I don't know, to be honest. I don't know. But I know there's something in interesting. Very interesting. What, just because you feel it? Yes. Got feeling. Well, let's hope Grace is right. At the moment, we're waiting for Gia Fizz to survey the garden before we start digging. Until then, we're going to use the time to double-check the spoil heap created when the septic tank was put in. History Hit is like Netflix, just for history fans. With exclusive history documentaries covering some of the most famous people and events in history, just for you. Our extensive catalogue of documentaries covers everything from the rise of Hannibal Barker to the illustrious treasures of King Tut. So sign up today for broadcast quality documentaries uncovering the mysteries of the ancient world. We're committed to bringing history fans award-winning documentaries and podcasts that you cannot find anywhere else. Sign up now for a free trial, and Odyssey fans get 50% off their first three months. Just be sure to use the code ODYSSEY at checkout. I, mean, I ain't very keen on this, uh, <laughs> this spoil tip archaeology, but... <laughs> But he has left the summit. In addition to wanting to find out what's under their garden, David and Grace have noticed lots of lumps and bumps in the field next door. I want to know if these could be further clues to who was living here in the past. This is a job for our landscape surveyor, Stuart Ainsworth, who already, thanks to some photos taken by a local photographer, has noticed several features which may be worth further investigation. That area there is where the septic tank is in the back of Grace and David's garden. Yeah. If you look over here, alongside the road, can you see these rectangular structures? Oh, very clear, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. There's another one in there. They look as if they might be medieval or post-medieval buildings oh, to sure me. Right. And there's all sorts of other stuff, little boundaries coming off. I'm just wondering whether we might have a, a small hamlet, something like yeah. that, straggling out along the road. But on, on the other side of the road, you can see, can you see these oh, terraces? Yes. Yeah. And so on over here and this all this ploughing. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Because yeah. here you've got this, what appears to be an earlier field system overlain by ridge and furrow. This looks very much like a prehistoric field system. Wonderful position, south facing slope. And you, then you come down to the break of slope where you've got the classic location for Iron Age and Roman settlement. In fact, it's the optimum location for settlement of most periods. Mick to Victor, over. You found yourself a nice spot there, Victor. What are you doing? Grandstand view here, except it's bitterly cold as a gale blowing. What I'm doing basically is just a quick sketch of the two bungalows and having a bit of a fantasy of what would happen in the garden if we had an Iron Age roundhouse or alternately if we had one of these medieval stone houses, one of the long houses with attached roof. So I'm working on those two at the moment. Victor, in fact, has been fairly restrained with his sketch because in a landscape like this, the potential is enormous. It could contain evidence of an entire early Iron Age settlement and a medieval village, one built on top of the other. At the moment, all we know is that geophys have detected several features in the area of the septic tank, but nothing that's an obvious structure. So what do we do? I mean, it seems to me that the, the, the prime reason for doing this particular hole is to check out the stuff that you found, David, in this area, try and get some context to it. So we need to be near the pipe and near the septic tank. So perhaps we need to be in that sort of area. So where's that, Mick? Well, that's, there's the septic tank under that mound there. The yeah. pipe's going across down there. So our target without the geophysics would be around here, wouldn't it? Right. And now, on the base you... of the geophysics, I'd prefer to come this way a bit and go that way a bit. OK, well, if you've got a wall that way and a feature that way, we can presumably lay something out to take all of those. So at last, time to start taking up the turf and the debut of a new machine designed to speed up the process. Okay. Is, this a, is this the new labour-saving device? Is this is the turf cutter. This, in theory, should make it easier to replace the turf after the dig. You've got it like rolling up a carpet, ain't it? <laughs> what sort of carpet have you got? <laughs> have you seen my carpet? <laughs> in the field next door, digging begins in a more conventional way as we position our second trench over the earthwork which could be the remains of a medieval house. 
If David and Grace's pottery finds in the garden are anything to go by, over the next few days we should be uncovering bits of both the Iron Age and medieval story of Wadden. With this in mind, we've invited Jim Newbolt, a specialist in making medieval pottery, to work hello, with us. Oh, hello. Can I give you a hand with anything? Yes, uh, we could do with you taking your boots off. We need this mixing up here with your feet. Taking my boots off? That's it. Using methods and technology appropriate to each period, Jim's going to try to make replica Iron Age and medieval pots based on the pottery sherds we dig up in our trenches. So you use the heel rather than... That's the... right, just keep pushing... Today, the task is to build the kilns. We're using local clay, and by adding water, it becomes easier to work with. The clay is then mixed with hay and rolled into balls that are used to make the walls of the medieval kiln. Right, so these are, this is the kiln wall for, for a medieval kiln, is That's it? That's right, yes. How high is it going to go? It's going to be around this height, in rather like a beehive fashion. Right, so you've got quite a lot to do. That's right, <laughs> But yes. you're also going to do an Iron Age firing as well, is that That's right? right. The Iron Age firing is going to be in this firebox here. We have the two fireboxes for the medieval kiln. So effectively the Iron Age bonfire in the pit will help fire the medieval That's kiln. That's right, yes. So that'll enable us to do pottery of, well, any period we find off the site. That's right, room. yes. But what have we found in the garden so far? Well, we think we've found what Geophys detected. John, I think we got your anomaly. That sounds good. Uh, <laughs> yes, but it's running along the hill. It looks like a drain. It is a drain. Oh, well, as long as you've got one going up and down, that's the anomaly. The pipe's no longer in use, so we're going to take it up and dig deeper. Today, Wadden is made up of just five houses. One of them's a large manor house, and it's in the barn next to this building where Robin Bush, our historian, will be working. Robin's task will be to trawl through a collection of original documents all relating to the manor and our site. How are you going to pull this stuff together over the next three days? What I'm looking for is, is evidence of References to the landscape, to old common fields, old open fields, uh, the way in which this, uh, th this estate uh, was worked, was managed. I mean, its very name goes back at least a thousand years. Wadden means Woad Hill. So presumably, either it grew wild or they actually cultivated it uh, on this hill, the woad with which supposedly the ancient Britons used to slap on themselves, you know, for battle. So it could be actually a much older name than a thousand years. Absolutely. Gosh, Brian, it's come on a bit, hasn't it? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. You've obviously got um, a wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got three walls. We've got the end of a building. What we're dealing with is the death of this building. It's collapsed mainly inwards, although with a little bit slumping onto the outside. So we were right. It was a ruined building causing the lumps and bumps. Wow. And so far, the finds suggest that the building was abandoned around 1700 AD. So does this sort of stuff suggest that people living here were quite wealthy, or is it very much your kind of farm labourers stuff? No, I think there was there's some suggestion that they were relatively well-to-do um, and they had more than just one slipware vessel, that they clearly liked to have some decorative vessels on their table. Have we got any medieval pottery here at all? We've, I've just found one, oh. <laughs> actually. And it's a tiny base, thumbed there. So that would be 13th, 14th century, and that's the only bit of medieval we've found. So we've discovered a building, and tomorrow we want to find out when it was built and also if there's any trace of even earlier buildings underneath. This would help us to answer David and Grace's question about how long people have been living here. Grace, however, at the moment seems happy enough having a quiet chat with Phil. What's that? Is that Portland out there, is it? It is. That's Port that right, is. Portland Bill. Yes. Well, you can understand why people want to live here, though, mm -hmm. can't you? You're just lucky enough to be the person now. Absolutely, we're in the next in line and it goes on ever on. At the kiln site, our potter is quite happily breaking up replica pots. These will help to spread the heat across the floor of the medieval kiln when it's fired tomorrow. But now we've reached the end of day one. Everyone, I'm sure, has enjoyed the weather, but how are we doing with the archaeology? 
So you're pretty happy with what's going on around here? Yeah, I think we put some trenches in through the rubble there and get yeah. down to the early levels of that building. But what about in this garden? I mean, I know <laughs> David and Grace are really excited, but quite frankly, the best that you can say about this is that it's a, an enigmatic hole. What do you mean, enigmatic hole? Look, this trench is stuffed full of archaeology. <laughs> Look, the only bits that are natural are those yellow bits. All the dark bits, other than that, are features. We've got to dig them out, find out how old they are and what's in them. So there could be Iron Age down there? There though. definitely yeah. there could be. Yeah. I mean, I think we should put another trench in the other side of the septic yeah. tank, where we know all that material came out when the septic tank was dug. So it seems to make sense as we've got one trench this side, so we've got another one over there, and that'll double our chances of getting an Iron Age structure. Yes. OK. Happy about so, that. end of day one, this lot are really up about it. Yeah, yeah, Although, we are, yeah. quite frankly, yeah. we haven't found anything like the amount of Iron Age stuff I thought we'd find. And the thing I remember most about today is those enormous pieces of Iron Age pottery, the size of digestive biscuits that Grace has got. Surely that must imply there's an Iron Age settlement around here somewhere. Tomorrow, let's hope we find it. Because believe me, I'm going to be pushing this lot really hard. Tomorrow, shovels, spades, yeah. trowels, <laughs> in there. <laughs> the beginning of day two and Mick and I have come up onto the ridge to try and get a bit more of the whole picture. It's a fantastic view, isn't it? It's a fantastic bit of landscape, isn't it? And you can really see how close the sea is to our side yeah, from here. Yeah, we've got Chisel Beach over there, Abbotsbury over there. Shall we, we uh, get, if, we we go, if we go down a bit, we're out of the wind and we can see the sights from the top. Do you reckon there's a real chance that we'll be able to find out what was happening in all those different historical periods in David and Grace's back garden? Yeah, yeah I think so. I, mean, I hope so. I mean, that trench down there in their back garden, we're only just coming onto the archaeology. I think we have a very good chance of giving the Iron Age picture from that. Have you noticed how the wind's dropped? Yeah, I mean, it's very sheltered down where they're living down there. I mean, from the north wind, certainly. It must have been a haven compared with back there. Absolutely, yeah. But there's also a, an emerging medieval story, of course. We've We've got the house over there, the end of the story in the post-medieval period, but there's a whole series of platforms and buildings which includes their garden. I mean, they've got all this medieval pottery from the garden. It's fairly clear that there was a house somewhere in that vicinity as well. In the garden, as Grace can see, we're now opening up another trench on the other side of the septic tank. We're looking to see if there are any building remains under here, which might explain why David and Grace have found so much Iron Age and medieval pottery. Meanwhile, in our original trench, Phil's digging the darker soil features he discovered yesterday. We need to establish what they are so that we can then investigate deeper down. Oh, you're deep in Hello. thought there, Stuart. Yes, you caught me at it, mate. <laughs> What have you thought then? I've been saying you've been having big thoughts. I've been trying to work out really what's the context, what happened, what's happening in Grace and David's garden by examining everything round about. And you can see, can you see up here, there's big terraces here, Tony. Yeah. There's no reason why these aren't Iron Age field terraces reused in the medieval period. We know we've got a medieval house over there, which we're digging at the moment, and that's on top of these terraces. So the implication is in the garden that we may have that depth of soil on some of those terraces to get to, yeah. potentially, yeah. before we get to Iron Age. <laughs> well, <certainly laughs> We'd never be able to <laughs> dig that much, would we? Are you saying that we would have to dig down to here, from there? It, it depends where we're digging, because we're digging on the downslope side. That's where all the material yeah. moves down to. If you're digging on the uphill side, then that's yeah. nearer the original yeah. Iron Age These, these level. things form by ploughing, you see. Yeah. If you, and what, what tends to happen is the soil gets dragged from the uphill side, so you're not very deep onto bedrock at that end, but it builds up into a great yeah. bank at the bottom. So our bottom trench could be very deep, but our top trench might It'll be, be quite high, shallow. Yeah. Stewart's also noticed two trackways that are showing up as earthworks on the side of the ridge. They can be seen very clearly on one of the photos. This trackway, he thinks, is medieval. But the higher one is earlier, and this is clear to Stewart because this medieval field boundary goes over it. This prehistoric track, which could be Iron Age, leads to another earthwork which Stewart's interested in. So we've actually got an Iron Age trackway which leads to fields over here, comes down here, and eventually leads off over here. 
and this is that curved enclosure that yeah. I was badgering you about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That is an earthwork. Don't understand what it is, but this trackway heads towards it. Well, we've got a trench in there now trying to see, because geophysics didn't come up didn't with anything. Didn't come up with anything at all, but it's such a clear yeah. earthwork that I want to keep running yeah. with that one. So we've opened up another trench on the far side of the field. We know that the feature's early because it's got medieval ploughing over it. But does it have any connection with the Iron Age pottery finds in the garden? We'll have to wait and see. Lisa, Jenny and I were just looking through this stuff that's come out of this top trench we started. I mean, I really hope, hoped we'd get lots and lots of Iron Age pottery out of this because yeah. it's near the septic tank. Obviously, we're not getting much pottery at all, but is there any Iron Age stuff? Yes, there is in oh, this good. tray. Yeah. This one is particularly nice. It's a, it's a well-known type. It's a bowl with a nice red finish, traces of the red finish here. Right, so is this a good one, do you think, to get Jim to try and reproduce? I mean, that's what we wanted to get him to do, was try and do vessels that came out of the trench. Yes, I, th I think it would be a, a, a perfect one. Currently, our potter's making a reproduction based on the one bit of medieval pottery we found in our trench in the field yesterday. What actually powers it? That's just inertia. You're not pedaling. This is just the momentum of the wheel itself. I send it round with my hand, but it means I've got both feet on the ground. It keeps you steady. That's right. But you have to keep re-spinning it. That's right, but at, at, the, at each stage is when I need to put my hand in the water as well. Yes. Yeah. So you've got the base now, and you're presumably going to lift it up. That's right. Yeah. Jim and his helpers need to make lots of medieval pottery to fill up the kiln, but just now, we've got a much harder challenge for him, to make a replica based on a bit of Iron Age pottery, something he's never tried to do before. Lisa, you've managed to work out which uh, bowl shape we're after. Yes, it, it's roughly this one, like this published drawing, and it would be about this size. Right, so that's, and that, that sort of, that's where you've drawn. So the challenge is on. Can we make a replica Iron Age pot to match the sherd we found in Grace's garden? Carenza's volunteered to get the experiment started. The big difference between this and medieval pottery is that this is made without a wheel. That's it. This is, this is a long process. This will be a real experiment to match the shape, the fabric and the colour of the pot. And as no one knows how it was made for sure, our attempt will be based on theory, potting experience and guesswork. We're not exactly sure what these bowls were used for. They were probably multifunctional, but again, probably not for cooking. Oh, really? They may well have held liquids. They may have even been for drinking from, and probably just generally as tablewares. But I think the, um, the fact that we very rarely find um, carbonized residue means that they weren't used for cooking That's on the whole. Meanwhile, just outside Grace's window in our new trench, the deeper we dig, the better it seems to get. Oh, big bit. Yeah. It's more of that uh, handmade Iron Age stuff, isn't it? Yeah, that's like Iron Age. the bottom of a big jar? Yeah, it's a base. Brilliant. It's quite fragile, isn't it? In fact, it's beginning to look like we may have more than pottery here. I'd like to think it was, was maybe a back end of a wall cut into the terrace. I mean, that edge there does look as though it's cut away. And uh, who knows? I mean, maybe, just maybe, David went and plonked his, his uh, septic tank slap bang on top of a building. There's also some good news from the field next door, because our test trench across the circular earthwork has also found some archaeology. Stuart's curious about why Geophys didn't detect anything here. This is the curved feature which was showing up on the air photograph and which is visible as an earthwork. And we're just putting a trench just across that section of it there, of the bank. The if geophysics I... is not saying there's nothing here. We're just saying we can't see anything different to the earthworks. Right. right. No additional information, really. There's a bit of additional information there now, isn't there? It's... Yeah. Phil! Tony! We've heard on the wire that you've got something. I too right we have. We've actually got our house by the looks of it. Look, you see this rubble? That is the wall of an Iron Age roundhouse. Oh, yeah. Beyond yeah. it 
is the outside of the building, and where I'm standing is the actual inside of the building. It looks very much like a rockery. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. But look at the size of these stones. They are part of a makeup of a really big, substantial wall. In here, where I'm standing, much, much smaller bits, all flat. The, the medieval pottery has just totally disappeared. We're getting yeah, big yeah, pieces of yeah. Iron Age pottery. Pete has actually dug one of these, you know, so, you know, you know what you're looking at, presumably. Is that what it. yours looked like when you first... It feels right. You can see the rubble, and you've also got some of the stone just tipping off and slipping down into the interior of the hut. The other thing you've got here is a space at the back of the hut before you have a change in the slope to the next terrace up there. And on this flat piece of ground, which technically is called a berm, you've got a slight hollow which could represent a drip gully off the thatch of the hut. So in other words, you can actually almost estimate the thickness of your thatch as the water runs down and goes into this little hollow there. From the curve of the wall, we should be able to work out how big the hut was, but where would the door have been? We've got enough excavated prehistoric houses now to know that they tend to face south-southeast. It optimises the amount of light you get from sunrise and may have some religious significance yeah, as well. If you look from here, look, it would have been a cracking view, look. Straight out <laughs> to sea down there towards Portland. That's Portland Bill, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is great. Iron Age houses are rarely on their own, so there could be lots more to find here. The next job, though, is to mark out the position of this hut and work out where the doorway should be. And then leave a gap of about a metre and a half. We then plan to open up another trench across the doorway. And then start again. That's southeast where the door would be. <laughs> I just don't believe it. Of all the places to put a septic tank, I mean, look at it. <laughs> There's no wonder the fine's turned up, is it? It's not, is it? And they're right in the middle of the house. Although we've only found a bit of the roundhouse Grace! so far, I can't wait to tell David and Grace. Grace, this is Victor, who's uh, who's our artist. Hello. Hello. David, Grace. Hello. Now, Victor. before we started digging on day one, Victor drew this, and it was what he imagined we would like to find in your back garden, which is this Iron Age hut. It's beautiful. And the good news is, we found an Iron Age hut just where <laughs> it might be, which is in that trench. So you were right, all that business about... Uh, gut feeling. Yeah, gut feeling. Yeah. With a bit of luck, we should be able to show David and Grace not only a roundhouse, but also the kind of pottery used there. And believe it or not, Jim reckons that this iron ochre clay is what the Iron Age potters must have used to achieve the red finish on their pottery. You think you can actually achieve this colour from that yes, slip? Yes, yes. There's a, a lot of iron in this body, in this clay, so it should at least get something semblance of that. This is really... Uh, a trial run, so we'll see how it works. <laughs> Iron-rich clay is fairly easy to find, and Jim's sure that there must have been some close by. It's the firing process that affects the change in colour, but was this really how it was done in the Iron Age? Hopefully we'll find out. It must seem that we've forgotten about our dig uncovering what we hope is a medieval building in the field next door. The truth is, what we're trying to do is allow Barney and his diggers time to reveal more of the building. Robin also is on the lookout for documentary references that might help. But in the trench, the latest news is that we've discovered a courtyard with a flagstone floor, and Barney now wants permission to dig beneath it. I think, I think you have to do that because, I mean, we really want to know what date that area was first occupied, don't we? See whether it goes to the medieval settlement or not. I got very excited about all the Iron Age finds, but I haven't really had much of a chance to look at the medieval. What have we got, Maureen? We've got lots of 13th and 14th century coarse utilitarian wares that they might have used here. But what's most interesting is the fact that we've got lots of dishes rather than the jars that we would normally expect to find. And that would suggest that perhaps it was associated with dairying. 
One of the more interesting things is that around here that they were making cisterns in the 15th century. What do you mean by cisterns? A cistern, it's a large jar with a bung hole at the bottom, rather like a present day cider um, mm. barrel. And it has a little spigot at the bottom, but just above the base, and you could draw off more of your cider or your ale. But it's a particular feature of this site that we've got several of them, and we hope to get the potter to replicate. What does that, that tell you it? about your forebears? Oh, I think pretty <laughs> drunken bunch, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jim is making a replica of the 600-year-old cistern. He also has another cistern with him, which we'll be able to use tonight. But it's not completely ready. It still needs to be pitched to be made watertight. This was done using melted beeswax or pine resin. This is where the pitching comes in, as I'm pouring it out. Oh, I see. So the pitching is the turning it round, in That's fact, right. like a ship it's pitching being and turning, pitched pitching in the out of the item. We're also attempting to make pottery as it might have been made 2,000 years earlier, in the Iron Age. Currently, we're trying to recreate the smooth finish to the pot. In our new trench to find the doorway of the Iron Age hut, the signs are already yeah, looking good. Um, it's a different sort of pottery, but it's of the right date. It goes with the rest of it. Oh, right, so it's early Iron Age. Then. That's right, it's early Iron Age, about 600 right. BC. Because you think tomorrow, perhaps at this time, we might actually be able to invite you through the doorway of your very own roundhouse. Well, that would be very nice, wouldn't it? You are a lucky devil, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'd give my left leg to have an Iron Age round house in my back garden. Would you? Yeah, that I would. <laughs> you want to move in, Phil? Yeah. Do you want to move in? Well, why not? I mean... <laughs> it's been a great day, and tomorrow should be even better as we hope to reveal the floor of the roundhouse and find out what's under the mystery earthwork in the field next door. To celebrate a successful day, we've invited David and Grace to join us for a drink. So how's it been going your influenza? Well, we've been very busy. We've made a huge number of pots, as you can see, um, both Iron Age and medieval. It's, it's actually been really, really useful because it's given us the chance to do a lot of experiments to try and find out how they were making the pottery that we're finding in the trenches. What sort of thing? Well, one really interesting thing that has come up is that the Iron Age pottery we're finding, we reckon, was made by women. How do you work that out? because some of it is decorated with thumb or fingerprint imprints. And we tried with Jim and his finger and thumb, it's even his little finger, is far too big to have made those imprints. So we reckon it must have been someone with very small fingers, either a woman or even a child. What are you really proud of? Well, I'll tell you what we did, which was really fun. Yeah. We actually did some pitching, waterproofing, one of these um, cistern Oh, pitches. I know about this, yes. This is like <laughs> one we saw this afternoon with this little bung hole. That's right, again, it's all based on what we've been getting out of the trenches. Yeah. Um, but have a taste and see if you can work out what we actually use to waterproof it with. Oh. <laughs> Just tastes of cider, doesn't it? Oh, that's really good, actually. It, it's actually pine resin. Well, that's excellent that taste doesn't come so through. It's working. It is working. That's that right. Absolutely yeah. not at all. I, I, I think I'll try again. <laughs> <laughs> But the day's not over for everyone, because the firing process will go on all through the night. It's really exciting to actually got this all lit at last. I've been looking forward to it all day, and now the firing's well underway. And that's the medieval pots in the mud kiln? That's right, in the big mounded up thing there. And then the Iron Age pots are just sitting in the bonfire. It's called a clamp kiln, but it's just a bonfire in a pit, basically. But that bonfire is firing the medieval kiln as well. What about these medieval ones? Can we see them? You'll be able to see those from the other side if you look in the other stove. Come around and have a look, because we've got, we're going to have two fires firing this kiln. And we haven't lit this one yet, so you can actually get right oh. around here. And uh, <laughs> you get right down, you can just see the bottom of that lowest pot, one of our big pots. Oh, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, 9.40. It really is the end of day two for Corenda and I. We're going to slope off back to the hotel. But Jim's got to stay here till the wee small hours of the morning, That's haven't it. you? Looking after his pots. Join us after the break and let's hope that they really do look the business when they come out tomorrow morning for the grand kiln opening. <laughs> no, no, Jim. No, no. See you, Jim. Hope it doesn't rain. <laughs> Day three. It's the last day of our dig here in Wadden, and we're hoping it's going to go well because this is a special day for Grace. Hello, Grace. Hello. 
a little bird has told us that it's a bit of a special day for you today. <laughs> I don't believe So, from everybody oh. on the time team, very many happy returns of the day. I don't know what to say, but thank you very much. Well, Jim, what time did you get home last night? Oh, crack of dawn that was. Crack of dawn. Really late? Yep. How did yep. it all go? Um, very well, very well. We had a few bangs and crashes, but uh, I think it's been a success. Bangs and crashes from in here? And out here. Well, I can see that, that, that doesn't bode too well, does it? It has been a success, though. We've got things to do what we wanted them to really? do. Really? Has Carenza seen this yet? No, not yet. Carenza is checking our progress with the Iron Age roundhouse. Oh, wow. This is Look. where you've extended this trench. That's right, yeah. And oh, right, yeah. Let's show you. that same curve it keeps again. It's going it? round. Presumably so, we will join these two trenches up and then we'll be able to see exactly where it goes and That's right. quite That's how right. the less clear stuff we're getting that trench fits we'll with We'll dogleg our way round this bush. Yeah. But the time we join them up, we shall end up with a hell of an arc on this roundhouse. So we've lots to do today. We want to find the doorway and floor of the roundhouse. We'll continue to search for earlier evidence under the building in the field next door. And we've got another trench to sort out, which I haven't even seen yet. Wow, look at this clay coming out. Oh, what? That might be good. The clay pit. Oh, they get out. Blustery up here, isn't it? You're going to like this, are like like Jolly good. Oh, the trench has collapsed. Look at the test pit. Good God. <laughs> Some sort of foundations for a hotel or something. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you this dig so enormous. deep? Because following the fill. But what, this, 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 this sticky clay stuff? This cut yeah. Yeah. down, down yeah. there. That's all fill, that's not just natural. No. no, no. What it is, is an enormous ditch, huge, with a bank on this side. Hang on a minute, hang on. The ditch is going that way. Yeah. yeah. What led us here was this photograph and this curved enclosure we've been talking about from, from day one. And we wondered whether it was going to be a, a settlement of some yeah. kind. Yeah. Yeah. The geophysics showed that it clearly isn't settlement. Mm. Now you've got this. Yeah, well, we, we, yeah. Kept, we kept pursuing it yeah. because there was clearly a, an earthwork here. We had to keep going with yeah. it. And what we've ended up with is this huge ditch on the inside, the big curved earthwork. <laughs> I only know one thing that has yeah. a big yeah. ditch on yeah. the inside and the bank on the outside, and I don't really believe what I'm hearing. Yeah. Well, what is <laughs> it? <laughs> we, we think, I mean, the dimensions and everything are right for it being a henge, which is a late Neolithic <gasps> ceremonial yeah. monument. Yeah. <laughs> if that's right, that's a mega, 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 fine, mega isn't it? Yes. Is that Mick, <laughs> Mick, if it's a henge, that doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be big bits of stone lying around, does it? No, no, because a lot of them had timber settings inside or in, indeed no obvious features inside. It's difficult to see the soil changes which indicate that we found a ditch and bank because the trench has partly collapsed. But the crucial next step will be to find some dating evidence. And am I right in saying that henge building was about the same time as the early pyramids? Yeah, we, we're talking about 2500 BC in round figures. So like we've actually the moved the <laughs> habitation <laughs> of this area yeah. well, hang back on. another thousand hang years. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. That, that's what it looks like. I think we need to do a lot more work today to try yeah. and clarify So this, we're not going to get excited? Yeah, we are. <laughs> we are. Oh, yeah, we're excited. <laughs> we're excited, and I think David and Grace will be too. And guess what we found in it? Tell me. Go on. Go on. What? what? <laughs> what do you think? A henge. A henge. A henge, yeah. Can you explain to them what one is? Well, I'm Don't gobsmacked. Think. We all are. Totally I gobsmacked. I am. See you later. Bye. I knew Bye. it. I knew it. I knew it. It's <laughs> nice to hear <laughs> Phil <laughs> speechless. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's only something like that that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> So it could be a henge, a place where people were worshipping as far back as 4,000 years ago. But we have to find some dating evidence to prove it. Dating material isn't a problem in the garden, though, where we're continuing to find evidence of the people living here in the early Iron Age, a mere two and a half thousand years ago. But it's a complicated business sorting out layers of rubble, and it's beginning to look like we might have more than one roundhouse here. The goal's still the same, to find the doorway and, most importantly, the floor where we could discover items left behind by the people who lived there. But now, over at the kiln, the pots have cooled down and we can see how we've done trying to replicate some of the Iron Age pottery. 
they all seem to be broken at the moment, Jim. Is that because in order to do the experimental firing in the time we had available, we put them in a bit when they were a bit wet? That's right. Normally we've got at least two weeks before for the drying process. <laughs> we had a so day. <laughs> a day was not quite long enough. Well, that's in one piece, isn't it? Just about. Yeah. It is a bit of nearly. Crack, but... It's a pity that a lot are broken, but the important goal was to match the fabric and colour. And right, see, now this was the one we were trying to get that red burnished effect right. on. Now this is only fired on one side really, but we've forced this through. So oh, look at that, look. look. And that's red, that's beautiful. That's and simple. the burnishing is... Show you, have you got that one there? It's looking very similar. And I'll see what else we have. Right. That is yes. brilliant. Oh, that's oh look at that. That's, that's, a, that's, that's, and that's the rim, rim that's, section. Yes, oh, that's, that's exactly the bit we have. So that's where it's been down in the clamp kiln itself, where it's had very little oxygen at all. So right, that's, so it's a reducing atmosphere. That's right. Just, but look at that, Lisa. That's yes. exactly right. At least even the and rim again, is, yeah. isn't it? There we go there. Oh, oh you've succeeded fantastic. with that. Out at the henge site, as we now call it, we're extending the trench, and Phil's decided to oversee the job himself. As people didn't live on sites like this, finds are usually few and far between, but we're relying on Phil to spot any dating evidence should it turn up. Meanwhile, it's time for a final report on the other set of lumps and bumps we've been uncovering in this field. Now, I hear that what we've got is a post-medieval cottage, is that right? That's right. It went out of use in around 1700, but what we can tell you now is that it was built sometime after, say, 1500. Because, uh, that's it's uh, sitting on top of this great late medieval courtyard. Ah, so all this here... This is evidence of an earlier stone building which stood here in the 1400s. But we've also found occupation evidence telling us that people were living on this terrace in the 1200s. Victor's drawn the building we know most about, the last one, built around 1500 AD. Yeah, we've got the square courtyard here, the cottage on one side, and even the slate roofs, so it's exactly what the archaeology has been telling us. We, we know about the track. The drawing does help to bring it to life, but if I'm honest, I don't really understand how it actually relates to what we found in the yeah. trench. Exactly I asked Mick here? to show me. Well, you can see the wall there coming across, look, and then where that red blob is the corner. Yeah. And that wall comes back across here, look. Yeah. And then turns again here and goes back. And you can see the way the grass is draped up over it, which is why we had the earthwork clue to start with. So what's this? rubble here. Well, all, all the stone that you can see both in there and this, this of course is inside the building Yeah. and this is outside yeah. all of this is the rubble that's collapsed from the wall so you've got like a great mound of debris if we had the time and could take all this away, we'd have these walls standing proud on the original garden and courtyard surface. And is that little sondage trench, does that go down to the floor? Yeah. Now, what we've done there is that is the floor inside the building yeah. with all the debris on the top. How big would the original cottage have been? Well, we've got the end here, and I've actually put a couple of buckets, so the green bucket and the red bucket, which are more or less the other two corners. So it's sort of end onto the slope like that, when the gable roof would have gone that way originally. So it was quite big, wasn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, and they always look smaller in the ground than they are when they're, they're fully standing. If you start taking out... What's more, so we can get an idea of what some of the pottery finds from that trench would have looked like. Oh! Wow. That's the chimney. Yeah. 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 Is, is this one of them? No, no, that's one of the pots we put in as a baffler. So throw that down behind you as well. So what does baffler mean? Baffler, this is to diffuse the flames, really. All right, so I, I needn't be impressed by this. Now, we're getting down to the pots here. Yeah. Is this one? Oh, yes. That is, that is. Yes. yes. This was made in the year 1346. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could have been, couldn't it? Oh, could you catch oh, the other yeah. one? Right. Oh, that's fantastic. That's, that's a one piece. Now, it's blown out oh, well. on the base there. But, but can again, you pitch that, Jim? Pitch that and that will be sealed. So that would so do, that would work. if you'd like to place that over there... Two oh, hands. Two I'll, hands. I'll grab that, thank you. <laughs> and that's the done whole picture. Oh, oh like excellent. That. So now, not only can we show David and Grace what some of the pottery looked like when complete, but for the first time, we can give them new information about Wadden as it was in medieval times. Robin can report that the documentary evidence suggests that Wadden has never been much bigger than it is today. Uh, in 1288, uh, we've got um, the, the manor house, obviously, uh, a customary tenant called Geoffrey Heron, three yeah. free tenants, and one cottar, someone who lived in a cottage. 
So what does that make? That's four, five, five, plus whoever's in the manor house. The Geophys survey of the terrace found evidence of what we think are more medieval buildings, and Stuart has an idea that there was another one just in front of Grace's house. Grace's cottage and David's cottage, and fossilised in this wall pattern, this rectangular shape, I'm sure is the remnants of another post-medieval cottage like the one we're excavating over in the field. Victor has used all the new information to conjure up a picture of medieval Wadden as it might have looked around 1200 AD. Meanwhile, on the far side of the field, Phil reckons he might have found some dating evidence for the Henge. Piece of pot. Look where it's come from. Look, there's the imprint of it. Yeah. But is it 4,000 years old? Is it a bit of Neolithic pottery? Luckily for us, we've got an expert visiting the site today who can tell us. You've got red on the inside, then very dark grey, and then, oh, what seems to be coming up as sort of buffish red on the outside. That's absolutely typical of pottery of late Neolithic and early Bronze Age. Hey! <laughs> that sounds encouraging. God, is it ever? But, oh. having said that, this is a very fine piece of pottery, and although it's plain, we were hoping that maybe in washing it we might have been able to see a bit of, bit of decoration. But on closer inspection, this bit of pot turns out to be medieval in date, and nothing to do with the henge, just another bit of debris accumulating in the ditch as the years rolled by. Evidence, though, of activity in the medieval period, when we know the henge was damaged by ploughing. Today, the subtle lumps and bumps of the henge can still be detected, as our GPS survey of the field shows. Victor's done this drawing yeah. uh, of a henge monument. Is this anything like you think this monument would have been? I think so. I mean, it shows the external bank, the inner ditch. What we haven't got any evidence for yet are uh, these rings of pits or any stone settings in the centre. Mm -hmm. But the general form of the bank and ditch, I think, is pretty close to what this would have looked like. The clear evidence of a big ditch on the inside of a huge bank is a combination that's only found on henge monuments, which is why we're still confident about our discovery. And as henges only occur in the Neolithic and Early Bronze Ages, it must mean that Wadden Henge was built sometime between 2500 and 1000 BC. So what started with pottery finds in one garden has resulted in a whole landscape being revealed. A landscape which tells the story of the continual occupation of Wadden for over 4,000 years. And now, as we reach the end of the dig, the news from the garden is that we finally come down onto the floor of the roundhouse. And just a moment ago, this bone ore was discovered there. And that's just come off the floor, has it? Yeah, just right off the floor. Well, that's, that's exactly what we were looking for, really, isn't it? It's beautiful. There's something really satisfying about oh. them, anyhow, isn't there? And, I mean, that, that sort of polished, that polished tip, I mean, you, you can't make a thing like that, can you? You can only get that polish by using it. Yeah, so we can imagine someone sitting here oh, maybe punching holes that. in leather to yeah. sew up some yeah. clothing in the middle of their house. I and mean, that's really a domestic activity inside our Iron Age house. It shows they lost needles, too. <laughs> David and Grace, we've just about got to the end of our three days with you, so now it's time to try and pull all the evidence together that we found in your back garden. Phil? Well, we now know that the pottery that came out of your septic tank came from at least two Iron Age roundhouses. Now, the one, most obvious one, the wall trench is just in front of where Tony is. Those two big stones. These ones here? That's it, exactly really? there. Yeah. Now, if you walk away from your Tony... This way? That's right. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. The wall would have run right the way around there. Keep going, Tony. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. The two big stones immediately on your left... These two? One side of the entrance door. So where's the other side? Underneath the blue helmet. Here? That's right. So, in fact, the entrance way is where you predicted it would be, looking straight out... Straight out to Portland Bill. And then, down there by the digger, we've got a boundary ditch. It was stuffed full of Iron Age pottery, but a boundary ditch belonging to the house. I'm Iron Age guy, I come into my home. That's right. If you step this way... Yeah. On the floor, immediately in front of you... Yeah. ..your wife would have dropped this. It's a beautiful, beautiful bone all. You found that down there? Just immediately in front of you on the floor. Wow. 
Here you are. That's all, folks. <laughs> That's absolutely good. <laughs> so from now on, whenever Grace looks out of her window, she'll be able to imagine several Iron Age roundhouses in her garden. We can help her imagination by taking her back to the Iron Age. And with more computer graphics, we can actually create an impression of what one of these houses might have looked like inside. So here I am again, Iron Age man, walking across the floor of my hut to the place where we found the bone ore. This is where I would have slept, I think, in a position to watch the sun rise through the door of the hut, wondering, no doubt, what the day had in store for me in 600 BC.